Docker tagging is actually an exceptionally powerful tool for us when it comes to managing our images. Now, keep in mind through the course of working in different environments or different applications, you're eventually gonna run into private repositories. Most places aren't gonna want you to have the public code available on the Docker store, right? And so you're gonna have private repositories. And so tagging as well as naming of images actually work together in order to define where you're uploading and pulling the images from, whether it's a private repository or the Docker store or your local machine, as well as what version of that image, right? So to demonstrate this, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna have us do a Docker pull on an image that we actually have at Cloud Assessments. So we'll do cloudassessments.com slash photo dash storage. And this is gonna pull the image and the different layers of that image, and we're gonna be able to see it. Now, what you're gonna see is that the name of the image is going to be cloudassessments.com slash photo storage, and it will have a tag. Now, the name is actually the repository, but because the Docker store, we have cloudassessments.com, which is actually our username at the Docker store slash Docker hub, right? So if it was a private repository, it would probably be the private repository URL, for example, some URL.com's colon port slash namespace cloudassessments.com slash image name in order to classify it because we can have multiple namespaces on an image for the name. So to demonstrate this, if we do Docker images, we see that it has the repository name and here is that repository name and then the tag, and then of course our image ID. Now when we talk about image names and repositories, quite honestly, I'm using those interchangeably. And what we'll see is that when we're using a private repository, whether it's Amazon ECR, Elastic Container Registry, uh, the endpoint for that, of which you would upload, would actually be the image name. So for example, let's say you have four different images on the Docker Public Hub. And let me go ahead and pull that up for you now so you can see what I'm referring to. So we actually do have four different images. We have our Cloud Assessments Com photo storage. Now the reason we have Cloud Assessments Com here is so it knows what user it's associated with. Now honestly, I've had to log into the Docker Hub or Docker Store in order to upload this, right? That's why I have permissions to upload it to this repository. And this image is actually different. So it's cloudassessments.com slash photo dash storage. And you'll see that we have different ones, which we'll probably end up using throughout this course. And so it's the latest tag. Now, again, tagging super important. We could have photo storage V1, photo storage 2017 or photo storage 2018 or photo storage 2016. That's how versioning works. And we can determine which images we're going to run. So let's say that you want a developer to go in and manage something on a legacy platform where the production container might be on version two, but the development container is on version three. You would just run the version two tagged image instead of the version three tag image. So super, super powerful here. I'm gonna teach you real quick how to re-tag specific images. Now, ideally, I'm not going to modify this image. I'm actually gonna create a new Docker file, which will use this image, for example, the photo storage image, as a base image and redo whatever I want it to do, whether it's download the latest version of the code, whether it have dependencies in there. It starts from that latest version, and then it follows a set of instructions to build a new image. But let's say that we already have an existing image and we want to learn how to tag that image. What I can do is, and I'm going to start fresh here, I'm going to do a clear and a Docker images to see what we're working with. And I can do a Docker tag. Now I can do multiple things here. I can provide the reference name by its name here, or I can use the image ID that we'd like to tag. So in fact, I'm just gonna use the image ID. Now, the thing is, is you're not gonna tag it cloud assessments. You can't upload to cloud assessments. So we're just gonna call this test tagging. We're gonna give it a namespace of photo dash storage because that's really the image we're working with, right? This is a test namespace, which is usually the repository. So we're just gonna pretend this is your repository. This is our image name. And then we're gonna give it a tag. And that tag is gonna be our colon. So we could do version 
1.0. Now we could do latest. Now remember when we do a Docker pull, if we don't specify the tag by using a colon, or if we do a Docker run and we don't specify the tag, it's always going to run the latest tag, the one that's tagged latest, right? And so in your application, if you always want the latest one, you'll tag it latest. But we're gonna tag it version 1.0. So we're gonna do a Docker images and see what's happened here. What it's done is it's created another entry for us and we see our latest version here and we see our Docker tag here. Now we're just gonna call this a separate entry because the way that Docker layers and caching works will actually affect how this works. It's actually really cool, but we're gonna not worry about that here. What we're gonna know is we have a new tagged image that is this latest version 1.0. And I can run this, and to run this, I can do a Docker IT, right? We're gonna do this as our example here. And I can actually specify what would be the name, aka also repository, and then the version 1.0. And then the command I want to execute and we do wanna make sure that we're using our docker run command and the command that we wanna to execute to run this container. And here we are and it drops us inside of that specific image. Okay, so this is where tagging is exceptionally powerful for us is we can manage different versions back and forth. And again, all we gotta do is send the image. We don't have to do anything else. So from a development standpoint and even a rollback standpoint of applications when we're doing continuous deployment, we just create a new version of that image. It's gonna run whatever changes we ask for it. And so it will actually only update those specific layers. Again, we'll get to that. And then we can tag it something new. So if we wanted to roll back, we just roll back to the previous tag. And so it makes for continuous deployment and continuous integration to be exceptional. So that concludes it for this lesson on Docker tagging. Again, make sure you understand this, it's very important. Go ahead and complete this lesson and move on to the next one.